Good morning, church. Good morning. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteousness judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. I have read to you from the 119th division of Psalms, verses 1 through 8, and may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing and doing of his word. Amen. Most holy Father, we come this morning with bowed down heads. Father, we just need to thank you today. Thanking you for all that you have done in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for having a listening ear when we reach out to you in prayer. Father, we know that you're a God that can do anything but fail. Help us, Lord. Help us to show love one to another sincerely. Help us to learn to love like you loved. Help us, Father, so that we can have that charity that blows. Father, we need you. Give us an understanding. Help us to walk in your ways. Help us to be in Christ the way you call us to be. I thank you, Lord, for the revelation. I thank you that when I call out to you and I said, Lord, I need this, that, and the other. Thank you, Lord, for showing me how to just wait so that you deliver. Father, everything I ask you for, you seem to lay it at my feet. And I say, thank you. Am I deserving? No, not all the time. But you already know. You know my heart, Lord. Help me to know that no matter how hard I try, I can't please man. But you say, keep trying. Keep trying. Show yourself to walk and look and do as I do. Thank you, Lord, for being that example. We all need that example to pattern ourselves after. Father, my heart is overflowing with thanksgiving to you. In your son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And with that, I want to ask our Sunday school teacher to come forward this morning to share his beautiful work with us. Calling out to Sister Brent Wentz. When you don't know what to do, stand in the house. God is on the throne. Whatever he said, it's going to happen. Father God, we come thanking you for your words. Thank you, you said that we lean not to our own understanding, but we stand in awe of you. We give you all the glory and all the honor. And as we unfold this day, we said thank you. You created in us a clean heart and a right spirit. And let us hear what the Spirit say to the church. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
She's real to me. Today lesson is chosen in Christ. Yes. Chosen. That's enough to shout about Hallelujah. right there. You ain't got to go no further. Not what man say on the way it looks. If you believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, what they have done, you are saved and you've been chosen. Our lesson text today is from Ephesians 1, 3 to 14. Whoa, time is AD 60, and the place is from Rome. Our golden text read as follows. God predestinated us into the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace. Ephesians 1, 5 and 6. Our lesson outline, God past action. Can't get away from history. Our present reality and our future existence. When we get in today's lesson, we're going to find out that God said you need to know who you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. It says here we're going to go with our scripture lesson text. Hey, thank you, Lord. Whoa, let's start with Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. We're going to start with... Uh, Brother Prince, I'm going to ask you, would you read 3 to 6? Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him for foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accept in the mouth. Yeah. yeah, I praise that. And Brother Michael, if you read 7, 8, 9, and 10. In whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Sister Kay. Sister Kay. Uh-huh. Could you do 11? Oh, and also, we had attained. Attained and Harry being predestined, predestined mm -hmm. according to to the purpose of his whom work all things after the counsel. counsel of his own will that we should be to the praise of his joy, of his glory who first trust in Christ. Christina? Let's do verse 13 together. Verse 13. In whom ye also 
trust him. You got to say it. Also trust him. After that, you heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believe ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit our promise. Praise the Lord. And that's Sister Prince what she do verse 14. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word, sanctified in our hearts that we don't sin against him. Our scripture lesson text is telling us about a person that was called out by God to take a message to the church. And the church today was Ephesians, Ephesus, we call it, the church. And it tells us in Ephesians that the messenger was in jail, was bound mm -hmm. by man, mm -hmm. but not by God. Mm -hmm. Our lesson comes telling us not only was Paul bound by man, but he didn't let that stop him getting a message where God told him to go and tell. He started off letting us, this whole lesson letting us know, do you know who you are? If you don't, this lesson should tell you. You're chosen before the foundation of the earth. Mm -hmm. I like how it said, God passed action his history, what he did, is for us right now. That's what helping us to know what he did in the past. He brought it up so we know that what he did, it made him make us a part of him. When you believe what he already done, it's not what you don't did. I like how it starts saying, you, you know, praise and worship. When we come in the house of the Lord, we just think about it. What he did, Paul reminded them that we are blessed. Blessed, why? Because you're chosen. Not that man got up and said, you're a member of the church, and, <laughs> and, and not by you getting up saying, oh, I did this and I did that. But here it said, in Christ, Christ did this. This is so important because we need to let people know it was what Christ did at that cross that gave us what we are today. He said, I like how it went on and said, he chose us for the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He did all this not because of what you did or what somebody said, because he loves us. That lets you know that Jesus Christ is all about love. When Paul gave the message, it wasn't to down them, but to let them know what they come up to and why. Because Jesus cared. I like how it went on in the illustration talk about spiritual blessings. See, people talk about, oh, you're blessed. But all spiritual blessings, all good things come from above. Mm -hmm. And Paul made sure they let them know about the blessing. He let them know about who chooses and who do what. Mm -hmm. When we go around here thinking that we can choose, <laughs> Paul letting us, God, I really abuse this man. And he want to use you to tell somebody else that Jesus loved. And he prepared everything you need. I like how it started. I said, what God did, what God did, I'm sorry, did you say something? Uh-uh-uh. No. Okay. What God did, nobody else could do it. Right. So, in the past, if you look at 
verse 3 to 6, it was telling us that the only way we is without blame for anything, because we all come short. And you look at yourself, you're going to find that you do come short. The only way we become blameless is when we go through the word of God, where it said we do everything goes through Jesus. That's where we get clean, where he went on that cross and took everything that we do, that we do against the Father. He took it on him. Can you imagine? Just think about that cross. Said her. He went through so much to water turn to blood. He went through so much to the piercing. It's got to the point he was separated from his father. I'm, I'm bringing you back together. I already know what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. So I looked at this and here. He let us know when we got to the place talking about what we did. It wasn't about you. It wasn't about what you thought you did or how you thought you did. God already know. He already knew just that. I like how he got there and he told us uh, he predestinated us to the adoption of truth. He already knew I was going to be here. Already. And I thought about it when he said adoption. See, uh, Jews thought we the favorite people and nobody else was going to be. But God's had that already planned that I was coming in and you was coming in. Mm -hmm. All who believe. This is where I like how he said, you know, uh, he did it according to his pleasure. We have a way we think worldly or pleasures is nothing compared to God. Because he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Let you know, he already know what was in you. But he know that has to be a change. And we couldn't do it. Think about that, and he gave us a word that we'll, if we keep it in mind, we won't get so high in mind and think we don't want to get it. Grace. You didn't deserve it, but he did it anyway. It's past what he did allow us to be chosen today. I thank God that says you ain't got to worry about who you is when you put yourself in Christ Jesus because one thing I have found out, the word will expose you. Whether you are God or whether you're not. And you don't need man to do no judging for you because they don't have that position. God did not give them the position to tell you where you are. The word is supposed to do it. And I thank God that Paul is letting Ephesians know <laughs> God don't call you out. You need to know who you are, and I'm going to tell you, don't listen to what man said. Man ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in. Paul was there in prison, and he didn't think about it simple. What do God want me to do? So when you're going through something, and it get rough, say, remember, just what Paul is telling these Ephesians. Don't think about your circumstances. Think about God, what he said, he's the solution. Ask him what the solution is. And God already told you that you are told, holy, and without blame. He done told you that you're adopted into the family. Mm -hmm. That means that no matter what nobody said, they can't take you out. God don't put you in. And adoption means, and I praise the Lord, to say adoption means that by the blood, you know, of Jesus Christ, we become one. By the blood, of Jesus Christ. We become adopted. We are not in the blood naturally from the world, but godly, like they say, how can you live? Somebody gets sick, they, they run to get blood. They say, it's in the blood. When you come to Jesus, you got to come covered by that blood that he shed on that cross, letting you know who you are. So when I looked at that, and I kept looking at it, said, God, past action. I looked at how God is sovereign and he teaches his people they can make a choice and people like to argue about the word but I found out is that most of the time is that they don't have understanding and God said that 
My people need to get an understanding my word. Ain't there enough to study and think you know it, but it said you need to get an understanding that you don't know no truth unless the Holy Spirit give it to you. Here, the truth of God's sovereign and man's responsibility. It says, 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 you have to make a choice whether you want to serve him or not. Mm -hmm. But then it comes here and he said, you already, he already know. <coughs> it's nothing new under the sun. Nothing that God don't know. He know what you're going to do way back then. So he know whether or not you're going to accept him. And he already said it's to all. But he is not holding you to, to tell you that he ain't got no power. Because he let us know, I know all this here ahead of time. Uh -huh. So when you get around to making up your mind, <laughs> and I hope it'll be soon, that let God be in charge. Uh -huh. Paul is telling them, you have a choice. God, and, and when he said you got a choice, you got a choice. That's right. He said you're predestinated, you are predestinated. That means he's an all-knowing, foreknowing God. I like how God allowed his word to just open up to us. That said, if you want it. Paul said, don't get in no debating about words and what it's saying. Said, if you got a doubt, come to me. The Holy Spirit opened up to me that don't think your intelligence is above God. <laughs> if he say something, that's what he means. Read about that situation. Stay there until God unfold it to you. Mm -hmm. So the truth is, is just what he said. He is infinite in wisdom. He knows how to communicate. He created you. You didn't create him. Everything he do, he makes sure it's truth. Here, being adopted. Suddenly, all you got... You're not, a, you're, you're not a, a part of, of my natural family, Christina, but you are a part of me adopted into the royal family. You're my child, because God gave it to you. You adopted into God's family when you believe what he already done. done. You are not left out in no, no way, form, or shape when it comes to God. Here, yeah, I like how he let uh, Paul tell them that we should place each one in the family and let them know they have all rights just like the Jews. You got just as much right in the family of God as the Jews. He still say they his favorite people, but when you come to the Lord and you become a legitimate son or daughter of God. I like how every privilege, he said, I gave to the Jews, I give it to you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like how he was saying, your obligations of what you done did is no more. It's canceled because I sent my son. Don't play light on what Jesus did because that position that Jesus played put us into the living for Jesus. If we couldn't have got there if it hadn't been for Jesus doing what he did. Because we leave it that not, you don't have a position over God. God have a position over you. He's calling. It's a joy when you know you're a child of the king. The purpose God gave to us. I look at that purpose. God planned when he chose us, he saved us, and he adopted us. He gave us everything we need. We have nothing to feel that we're above anyone because all of us got grace. Then all of them, he said, come to me. You, my beloved, I love you. That means that we we use, we're not hopeless anymore. When you accept the blessing that Jesus gives, you worthy because of what he did. 
we are in Christ. We are in the family of God. When you believe what he already done did, prepared for you in the past to take us on in the future. When I looked at that first part, I thought about blessed assurance. It's assurance when God gives you something. This is assurance. You're a child of the kingdom. It's a daily experience, but so, it also is an eternal. Walk daily with him, and you can live with him eternally. Looking at that verse and look at what he said, sometimes we have a strain in thinking of the world and the way they do things and, and the road they lead to God. But I'm going to tell you, he said, it's only one way. He said, I am the truth and the life. You got to come by Jesus Christ. I don't care what you do. You don't jump from believing to God. You got to go through what Jesus did and what he said. I looked at this according to his will. We don't know how important that word is. His will, not our will. The Father responds to the willingness of his son to give us healing, the voice. I like how he said, Thou art my son, my beloved son, and who I am well pleased. Jesus knows how to please the Father. When the Bible speaks of glory of his grace, it's telling us that God's glory is seen in his grace. It is his divine love that brings us back. Just like the prodigal son. He did all, went out and did everything he could even think of to do. And uh, asked for something that was not, but really it was just an inheritance. You know, it's supposed to be when you die. But his father, our father in heaven, look and see how we treat one another. And he still said, I love you, but I don't like the way you're acting. But he said, I still love you. He loved that boy, and he knew that he did wrong in the part of his But when he came back, God was still waiting for him. He, all he wanted us to do is repent and come back to him. Mm -hmm. I like how this lesson is starting off because we need to know what he's saying to us. We owe everything to God, especially the gift of grace. The heart of every true believer is expressed in the phrase simply to cling to the cross. And what he did and let's walk on by faith. That's all Paul was saying. Mm -hmm. Faith in Christ. Comments on the first part, talking about past. Past, God's past action. I like, the, I like verse 3. Mm -hmm. okay, it's one of my favorites. Okay. And it says right here, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who hath past tense, Past tense, mm. bless us with all spiritual blessing. That's right. And uh, our pastor said a long time ago that that is where the blessings begin. That's where the blessings oh. begin. And when we get it, when we we, we have those blessings, and it, it's all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So therefore, there is no moth to to uh, decay, no rust. It's in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So uh, I know that our inheritance, I didn't say mine, our inheritance is secure. Uh, our blessings are secure. And when you think about it that way, all you got to do is just follow what his word says. Oh, oh, oh. That's right. Anyone else? Mike said, he said it all. 
Through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has for purpose in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of our time he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Mm -hmm. It was talking about not what we can do, but the riches of the grace God allowed us. We don't earn nothing. 
because we can. So he already knew that it was a it was a cost for our sins. And the only one that could bring us through was Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. So I like how it started off letting us know. And I, I, I asked God, you know, give me a good example. And I kept going back to this, um, this, this Sunday school book. And, and I'm going to share what they, they said in here. A pawnbroker is a person who loans money and holds a person's possession until they are redeemed. And I thought about, uh, you know, I am redeemed by Christ. In other words, I owe so much. My sin was so spotted. I had no one else to go to. Uh, when I went to God, he said, your sin has blotted you out from me. So much we have done and we don't do. We can't even get to the Father. So it was a silence, oh, if you read in the Bible, for a long time. Because we went so far away from God. But then he said, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to leave you there. So this here past, this is part of the past. It was that we were so far from him. And he says, here, I'm going to redeem you. You hear us sing, I am redeemed. That, that song means so much. If you look and listen to it, you know it's the word of God. Here it was saying that in the being in our present reality, how we are so far from God, we overlook how he forgave us all of the things that we done did. And yet when someone else do something to us, <laughs> we can't forgive them. Here we look at and you you thinking about the little things that happen here. It said to us it seems like a lot, but think about what you do to Christ. Oh, I don't do this and I don't do that, but I'm gonna tell you, if you really look at that picture of your life, you're gonna find well, oh, I, I thought I was doing this here. And that's why he said, Your thoughts ain't my thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's why he said, you need to renew your mind. When you start renewing mm -hmm. your mind, you say, oh, no, forgive me. Like they said, mm -hmm. oh, what a wretch. That, that, that person come across me one more time. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's the, the mind that we got when we come here. But God said, I'll remove that mind. Here, it's because of what God's son did on the cross. We are able to when we realize it was God that brought us out. It was God that's doing what is right, not us. It's God that's giving us that understanding. God had given us all these blessings and more according to his riches. Not because you're so good. <laughs> not because you made it to church every Sunday. No. Not because you uh, uh, say your food. I uh, went and watched someone up at the... It is not because of it. It's because... He just looked at yelling all those false out there and said, I give you the most strength. Renew you when you should be laying out dead. Mm -hmm. But God said, no, I'm going to lift you up. Mm -hmm. So this is the type of God we're saying. And he was saying, it's not your will, but it's my will. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to be done. I allow some things to happen, but it's in my will. Already knew, and so I knew what you need. I like how Paul explained the mystery of the Gentile. How they know some people think it's only for me. But see, when God opened the door, he said, whosoever we, let him come. I like how I studied this lesson that he was talking about. I think about the peace. How they used to have a petition in their temple. You had to go. Certain people could go. But then he opened up the door. He said, come on in. Whosoever we. I, I, I just love that part. Whosoever it is. Whatever you want to do. Like I say, you can't, believe it or not, you cannot stay in this word and don't see Jesus. All through this word. When you start talking, he already on page. It's no mystery because he said the only thing left is for him coming back. And that part, we only know part of it because he said, you know in part. 
but the Spirit reveals as you go. If you stay in the Word, it will start revealing to you what it is. I like how the fulfillment of the mission, the fulfillment and the end of it, the big beginning of it, just knowing a little about eternity. You don't know half of the Bible says, ears haven't he heard, nor I seen all that the Lord has in store for Still some mystery there, but the mystery keeps unfolding as we go along in this life. Here we see that sin tears everything apart, but in Christ, God was going to gather us there, and everything going to come together. When we put Christ at the head, I thought about when I read that, get in the boat. <laughs> Get in the boat. Get in the boat. And listen to the one that's at the end, and that's Jesus. The Holy Spirit is standing there. He said, Roll. You can't say, Oh, pick up the rope. He said, Roll. Roll. He gave you a command. Go. That's our command. Go. Tell somebody. Roll. Here, Paul just let Jesus use him, telling them, Follow what Christ said. No, it is not you. It's all about Christ. I like how he's saying, in this here part, I kept hearing you. This will help you to know who you are in Christ. Salvation is through Christ. I looked at this here and I said to myself, mm, you know what? God didn't leave nothing, no will unturned. Sin came in, but he let us know we don't have to stay in the state that we're in. Mm -hmm. I like it because it's God's word. God's choice before creation. He said, I redeem us, and I forgive you for what all you done did. I like how he said, we should never take for granted either God accepting us or our relationship with him. It ain't for the whole old head over somebody. That beacon should be shining for whosoever will. In God's time, his season, everything that God does for us is based on who and what he is, not on who we are. I, I like how... Uh, God is using this Sunday school lesson because in it is life. Life more abundant. Know who you are. Our present reality is that we are not doing anything. It's all about Christ and what he did. Comments, questions on the second part. We're talking about if you look at your topics, it got on them. Our present reality. What is happening present in reality now? He told us about the past. I already know about it now. I'm revealing it to you. It's not about you. It's about Christ. Our reality is now we're in trouble, but you don't have to worry about it because God has got the solution. As I told Chrissy, I said to her, you know, found out what the problem is. Now, you know God said, I got a solution for everything. So what is the solution? And I just thank him for how he let me see Christina and me and her talking, how he unfolded his words to, you know. And, and don't be just for her, but for me too. No matter what state you're in, just remember, it's all about Jesus. Question, next part, our future existence. Now, when I got to this one, uh, it said, Whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, <laughs> that we should be the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, and whom we ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that you believe, you will seal with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, 
until the redemption of the person possession unto the praise of his glory our future existence you are now a child of the king amen chosen ambassador <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I i i wrote all these notes but i told him i'm not a note person mm -hmm. it just as he gave me i said lord give it to me he said you study i'll give it to you he said, bring it to well, you and um when I looked at them of the future existence, thought about it, he said, no, you know, no more out there don't know who your daddy is. I want you to call me our father. Put you up in heaven. I know where he is. I know where my father is. You know, I, I get excited because he said, you inherit. I don't inherit you from the foundation. Nobody come to you and tell you. You not of me. I'm the one I tell you. Oh. He said, give thanks unto your father for this. You don't have to be tossed anymore. He said, he made us to be partake partakers. And you hear people say, saints? Yeah, thank God. He sent a light up in this beaming. Don't limit heaven. We are limit in the earth. But you're not limit in heaven. You need something. It's in that spiritual realm. He said you have to bring it down. It's there waiting for you. I like how it was saying in this lesson, you know, talking. I said, boy, Paul had the mind of Christ. And that's what he wants us. When you speak for me, have the mind of Christ. Don't think about what this one is saying or what this one is doing. He said, keep the mind of Christ and tell them, don't limit what my God can do. You can limit me, but you can't limit God. Whatever you need, whatever he said, it's that. Here we see, for more than one, you see how we read and, and tame so much how he give his children the best. Uh, the wonderful inheritance is that uh, that we got was he purchased us and made us part of the inheritance by saying I'm a doctor child he said uh, the father loves to give gifts and if you look around you can see our father giving us gifts all the time to think that God it's not our counsel late in the midnight hour. Just call him from your heart. He will answer. That's what you were talking about. He will answer. He is desirous how he got patient to wait on me. I like how he said, he has given me all I need. Mm -hmm. And being part of the heavenly family, without even thinking about when I Get up. My mind goes straight. Thank you, Lord. Waking me up. That's what you was talking about. These are things you inherit, not because you he changed your mind. You have to have a renewed mind. We I can remember he guaranteed us that we don't have to go in no competition with each other. But he said, I want you to hear what the Spirit said. And if you don't hear what the Spirit said, how can you do? It's, oh, I read it. It ain't going to get it. It got to be something within. that He said, you got to, a, a lot of people say, oh, I can't forgive them for that. But I'm going to tell you, late in the midnight hour, he said, I'm with you. Because ain't no way you didn't know how to forgive them. But I gave you the key. When you can pray for your enemies, God is in the midst. He's working it out for you. If you let him. I like how he guaranteed. Then Ephesians 1.13, he said, believe. It's not enough to hear about the possibility of salvation. There must be a response. It must be a response of belief in who Jesus is and what he has done. Here, I like how he got down to the end and said, yeah, 
can't nobody pluck you out of my hand. But you a seal. You a seal on you. You can't break that seal. Nobody mm -mm. on earth mm -mm. can break mm -mm. that seal. Mm -mm. Once you seal. I thank God for he said, indeed. When mm -hmm. you seal, I see you in heaven. We have been brought and redeemed with the price of Jesus' blood. And it will result in praises to his glory. And we are forever with him. When you believe what he already done you. This life lesson is so powerful. Is that we wish that everybody would hear his voice mm -hmm. and let them know who they are. And mm -hmm. the devil won't be pulling you back and forth and jumping mm -hmm. around you or get to the place that you rely on Christ. He has done Dang. all we need to do. We almost always supposed to live in a manner worthy of our position as God's children. And it ain't enough to just say, I'm bouncing you. You need to be there. Somebody out there is crying tonight. Somebody out there in the missionary world is said, when you go and help somebody besides yourself, that's God working in you. God gives us the Holy Spirit is just one of the many provisions that we have. We thank God for his provision. Ask him to lead us, guide us, know, let us know who we are. Is there any comments on the last talk? All right, talking about what God, now, not what we did, but our future existence. He wants us to cry out, let people know that he loves them and they are chosen when they believe what he already done. It's not that you ain't gonna say, I ain't seen no more. But you don't, they really, you don't practice because it bothers you if you're a child of the king. And you want the thing to get right. And so if you don't know how, just stay there and keep praying and asking God and reading his word. He will show you. He always works things out. I'm gonna turn it in the hand of the superintendent. Thank you for your ears. Mm. Excellent. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good lesson. Good lesson. God is good. Yes, God is good. Yes, when we let the Spirit work, it works. Oh, mm -hmm. I've heard Sister Winston say, talk about her not really considered being a teacher. But the Lord saw if you to teach this woman. Amen. Mm -hmm. Him, oh. he, did. Yes, he did. We knew where you were, oh. and we knew what you were saying. Mm -hmm. And that's God. That's God. They were saying that's God. And that's God. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Amen. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Chosen Amen. in Christ. Yes. In Christ, and that's where we want to. That's where it is. It's just right. This lesson is about past, present, mm -hmm. and future. And future. And I saw mm -hmm. a, a, something that really caught my eye in this book here. And it was somebody in here talking about how they came to faith in Christ. And they thought it was them. Yeah. <laughs> like so many of us, mm -hmm. we talk about when we were in the world. And we say, but one day I decided yeah. to give my life over <laughs> well, no. to the Lord. And we find out it didn't have a thing to do with us. Yes. <laughs> because the word says, the word says that he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. It says that he had chosen us in him. We didn't choose him. He chose us. 
Mm-hmm. It says, He predestinated us in advance. He called us mm-hmm. before the beginning of time. He did. We didn't have a thing to do with. <laughs> he has made us accepted in the beloved, in Jesus Christ. God did all of that mm-hmm. for us. He redeemed us. We were bought with the price. Amen. His Amen. precious blood. And forgiveness came along with it. Mm-hmm. Forgiveness of our sins. I'm telling you, this is such a beautiful lesson. Yes. Something that we all need to hear. And then, in closing, I want to share a few scriptures with you. Because presently, we need to be standing firm yes. in truth. And that's what Paul was telling his followers in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. This is Paul talking. Brethren, beloved of the Lord, because the God because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. So just like he chose them, he chose us. Yes. And what is that truth? Where unto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast mm-hmm. and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. See, we've been taught by word. We need to learn. Stand fast. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. We have a job to do. He called us. He chose us for a purpose to walk in the light, to walk in his light, to do his will. And we can do it with the help of the Lord. That's the only way. We can do it. Amen. With so his help. With his help. That's right. And that's the truth. With his help. And he knew what we were going to do from the beginning, (laughs) Mm -hmm. before the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad I was in that number. It's something to shout about, John. Yes. We didn't have to do a thing but believe and accept. And accept. So with that, I'm going to ask Deacon Prince to dismiss us. Amen. Amen. Father, once again, we come here this morning and I thank you for another beautiful day that you have made. I want you to continue to bless this house, continue to bless each member of this house, Lord. Mm-hmm. Continue to touch our minds and souls, Lord. So continue to follow your way, Lord. We ask all these blessings in your In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.